We are definitely in a post-antibiotic era. It's getting worse and worse. We must scramble to identify new methods of killing bacteria. We're here to fish for phage out of the East River. Bacteriophage are a new frontier. We've been looking for at least 10 years now to find new alternatives to antibiotics, and there are not too many. It's very difficult to kill bacteria and not kill you. So this is the cover of Nature when we, uh, it was one of the first papers that we published on uh, phage. And in this case, we were killing anthrax. Got the most publicity of any publication this university has ever received. Yeah, that was a fantastic day. <laughs> I'm Dr. Vincent Fischetti. I'm a professor at Rockefeller University and head of the Laboratory of Bacterial Pathogenesis and Immunology. We've been using antibiotics for about 100 years. And during that time, the bacteria have learned to become resistant to those antibiotics. Drug-resistant bacteria are one of the most uh, serious public health issues that we face today. We're losing the ability to treat infections. It's pretty serious. I mean, there are bugs right now that are resistant to all antibiotics. If you're infected by one of these organisms, you just hope that your body is able to control the infection. If it isn't, you're done. By the year 2050, which is not so far away, we will have more people die from uh, antibiotic-resistant infections than die currently from cancer. Well, what's happened over the years is, is actually the overuse of antibiotics. So one of the new weapons that people are using are, are whole phage. There are 10 to 100 million phage in every gram of soil, every cc of water. There are more phage on Earth than any other biological entity. Phage control the biosphere. They control us. They control the environment because they're controlling the bacteria that are in the environment. The phage infects the bacteria, injects its DNA in the bacteria. That DNA produces more phage. The bacteria explode releasing the phage progeny, and those phage can now infect other bacteria. Phage are the original um, antibiotic, in a sense. Before antibiotics were developed, we started using phage as a way to control bacterial infections. Just at the same time antibiotics were discovered, then we shifted to antibiotic development as opposed to phage development. Phages are in vogue right now because we're seeing these resistant issues. So we're going back to our roots. In the Eastern European countries over these years, they're the one area in the world that have kept phage therapy alive. Je m'appelle Marc Guillaume, j'ai 17 ans. Bah, la peau qui se refait tous les jours, euh, la couleur rouge et euh, d'autres petits symptômes, gros, gros ou petits symptômes partout. Ça fait mal, souvent. C'est la maladie du syndrome de Netherton. Ça fait depuis euh, ma naissance que j'ai ça. Oh oui, on en a essayé plein. Il euh, y a eu beaucoup d'antibiotiques. Je ne sais pas combien on en a eu d'ailleurs. Voilà, enfin, il y en a tellement, mais donc j'ai arrêté à force de les compter, parce que j'en avais beaucoup. Les antibiotiques ont marché pendant un certain temps, à peu près un mois, et après, bah, le corps était devenu des résistants, donc on a repris un autre antibiotique, et, et ça faisait la même chose, donc à force, on en a, ça ne marchait plus, en fait. 
Mark came to us from France with a very rare genetic disorder, which is Netherton syndrome. He had a lot of episodes, just sepsis, uh, when the infection goes to blood and time by time, he was taken to the hospital to treat with the antibiotics. And when you have antibiotic resistance, you cannot uh, help him, he could die. He came here to find the last chance to be treated. By help of the phage preparations, he has not had any episode of sepsis. In the ensemble, the phage is positive because I'm going to be better, and so it improves the body, the health. The skin sometimes calls it more, and the color of the skin is more blanc than before. It seems to be more close to a normal skin. Mark is just only one. We have dozens of the patients uh, with very good results. We have a lot of patients from the European Union, from the New Zealand, uh, uh, until to Canada or the US. So even we had patients from China, so they are coming here because bacteriophage therapy is not approved anywhere except the former Soviet Union. Since 1923, we are using the phages almost uh, 90 years already. So it's somehow uh, for the Western world, it's a forgotten uh, cure. This uh, fridge is just part of the Liala collection. It's so many different kinds of bacteriophages. For example, this is just a very small part of those, and uh, this is phages against E. coli, against Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So this is good viruses that can be used for treatment. We have also phages here, also like this. A lot, a lot. It's also here. We have one of the biggest collection of the phages in the world. No more job, but... So this test allows us to select active phage that can be used for treatment. So these are bacteria on the Petri dish. And when we have the transparent zones, it means that it works. It kills. It, it eats this bacteria. This is MRSA. It's a very nasty bacteria causing a lot of complications. And the virus, this good virus, kills it. Phages have very specific, very important role. I hope the Western countries also are ready to develop this forgotten cure for the future. So we're at the New Haven Water Treatment Facility here. We are going to try and collect some bacteriophages where we can hopefully find something that can treat horrible antibiotic-resistant infections. My name is Ben Chan. I'm an associate research scientist at Yale University. I travel a bit to the field to collect sewage samples. And in order to get phages, you have to go where the bacteria are. Phages use different receptors and they have different biology. And every phage you pull from the environment is going to be new to science. So you want to get different phages so that we can add it to our library. So that if you know the need arises for this phage, we, we have it. Superbugs are real, <laughs> definitely real. A lot of people have you know, the view that it is just hype or sensation because they don't have an infection. But chemical antibiotics are losing their edge so that you can go from being perfectly healthy to near death in a very short amount of time, and it's pretty scary. I get contacted fairly um, frequently by people with, with drug-resistant infections. If you are sick, that no therapeutics are working for you, the physician can apply to the FDA for like an emergency um, use of bacteriophages. There was a case in San Diego that was successfully treated. He was in a coma, he was in really rough shape, but they got a bacteriophage cocktail. If you take six different bacteriophages and you put them in a single cocktail, it's very unlikely that resistance will evolve to that cocktail. And so they injected him and now he's great. His wife sent me an email, he's basically getting back to his life before the infection. I've got some pushback um, from people. It is a little DIY. There's a lot of physicians that don't believe phage therapy could work. And you know, a lot of people are hesitant to, to take bacteriophages therapeutically because bacteriophages are a virus, right? And when we think virus, we think something that's going to cause a disease rather than something that could fix it. 
but I think they're going to be gradually incorporated more into therapeutic use in the United States out of desperation, right? Because we're going to need something. I think phage will be used here in the United States, but it'll be a boutique treatment and under the control of the FDA. But there's something more impactful than phages, and it's called lysin. Lysin is the ultimate kill. So a lysin is an enzyme produced by the bacteriophage. That enzyme goes to the cell wall, punches a hole in the wall. The phage is using it from the inside, and we are using just purified enzyme from the outside to explode the organism. This is an electron micrograph. So this is the organism, the bacteria. We added the lysin to this. We waited about a minute. And you can see here, the enzyme actually cut a hole here. And this is the cytoplasm coming out. So this is a dead bug. Once this leaks out, it's a dead bug. It, it can't cause an uh, infection anymore. Just so much pressure. It's like punching a hole in a balloon. It happens instantly. One, we just caught it just at, that, just at that right time. Yeah. To develop lysin by the FDA is, is a, a cleaner path than it is to develop phage cocktail. It's a purified compound, and FDA is comfortable with purified compounds. The problem with phage cocktail is after you run out, you have to make the exact same cocktail. It has to be exactly the same. And lot-to-lot and -lot homogeneity is going to be a difficult problem when you're dealing with mixtures like that. The other problem in developing phage in the United States is intellectual property. I can make a cocktail, but you can make a similar cocktail, so no one's going to put a billion dollars into a therapy that they don't have a patent. Lysin was patented. That, my, our enzymes are patented. We have developed lysins over the years against MRSA, the ones that are causing major problems in hospitals. Group A strep, organism that causes strep throat. Group B strep, organism that causes neonatal meningitis. Acinetobacter, that causes infections and burn patients in hospitals. So we have enzymes against most of the, of the organisms that cause disease. But in the system takes so long. That's what frustrates you. It takes, you know, eight, eight total, eight, 10 years from the time you start before it's out as a product. So that's, that's a lot of people die in those eight to 10 years. Il est nourri, donc les phages ne sont pas très connus, à part ben, en Géorgie. Bah, dans la plupart du monde, la indépendance aux antibiotiques, c'est bah, en fait c'est ce qui, ce qui est le plus près de chez nous en fait. Donc, il y en a qu qui veulent essayer d'autres choses, il y en a qui sont qui veulent pas. Donc ça dépend de la, de la personne. Il faut continuer les phages tant que ça marche. Voilà. Bon. This is a very effective way to on the millions and millions of people. So the Western world should consider our experience, our results, and I think in the nearest future, different countries in the West will consider the possibility of phage application against uh, antibiotic-resistant bacterial infections. There's going to have to be a new set of rules for approval and distribution. So perhaps the FDA could consider a library of bacteriophages, where there's you know hundreds of them that have been well characterized and developed by labs all over the world that a physician could have access to, rather than like a product of a cocktail or like a single phage. I think that that may be the direction it goes, and it'll be a little bit different than the traditional treatment for bacterial infections. But we might have to consider alternatives since it's a very difficult um, problem to solve. Nothing's a silver bullet. The bacteria will eventually learn how to become resistant to lysin, but I think it'll take a little bit longer for them to do that. It took them 70 years or 75 years to, be, to learn how to become resistant to antibiotics. It will take them well over 100 or 200 years to become resistant to, uh, to lysins. But that buys us more time. <laughs>